In this next segment, we will discuss argon gas. Now let's be serious here. Many people will tell you that argon gas is not necessary and you don't need to use it for your welder. Technically, they are correct. The welder will still function without argon gas. However, you'll find that if you do use argon, your weld will be cleaner, your electrode will last longer, the result will be easier to get and maintain and more consistent, and overall the experience will be a better welding experience. Now, argon gas is a noble inert gas. That means it's non-flammable. So it's gonna be extra safe. It's gonna help protect your electrode during the welding process, during that little spark, and help everything stay cleaner and last longer. Remember this, professional permanent jewelry artists, or PJ artists as we like to call them, professionals use argon gas. So, are you a professional? If so, use argon gas. Your experience and your client's experience will be much better. In this video, we're going to be showcasing how to install and pressurize your new argon mini tank, accompanied with the mini argon regulator. In order to get started, we need to remove this little black nib on the top of the tank. So I firmly grip the argon tank and then remove that little black nib at the top and it should come off freely. We can just set that aside. Then we're going to prepare our regulator by counterclockwise turning until that's fully loosened up. As you can see on the top, we're gonna to be spinning it towards the negative arrow. And now that it's all the way to the top, we can put that on our argon tank. And once those threads seat, you should be able to freely spin that argon regulator onto the tank. Now that we've met some resistance, we're going to just do a quick little turn and you'll notice on the left gauge that is now showing pressure. A full tank is between 100 and, 100 and 110 bar. Now the next thing that we can do is get our clear hose that came with our welder and install it here in this quick connect port. So we're just gonna push that in until it doesn't go in anymore. It's about a quarter inch. And you'll see that the teeth are engaged so you can't pull it free. Now let's say you need to remove it. So we'll push the white collar towards the body of the regulator and that will disengage the teeth and we can pull that hose free. So show you again, let's put that in. It's firmly in there. And I like pushing on the top and bottom of that white collar towards the body of the regulator and it comes free. So let's put that back in and then go to our welder and plug the opposite end of that clear hose in. So our welder is going to have a similar connection. We're going to just push that in and it won't come free. Perfect. Now again, just to demonstrate that previous technique is we're going to push that white collar towards the body of the machine machine there. And you'll notice I have some struggles here. If I do a top and bottom, it comes off very easily. So let's push that back in and then go back to our regulator. So we're going to take a close look on our right gauge. And we're going to turn that clockwise, increasing the pressure that's leaving, as you can see, the positive. So we're going to increase pressure keeping an eye on this right gauge. Take our time, nice and slow. Eventually we'll start seeing that needle creep up. And we're just gonna slowly turn that until it reaches that mark that's been drawn on the regulator. Now, sometimes our gas gets a little bit too high. And what do we do when that happens? Now, the first thing that we gotta do is we gotta decrease that pressure that's leaving the tank. And so I just counterclockwise a couple turns, go back to that hose. We're gonna disengage it like we've shown before. Re-engage that hose and then pressurize it up again. Now, at this point, you can just leave it alone. 
You don't have to do any more uh, adjustments to this tank and you're free to start welding again. Now let's say where it's time to switch out a tank or go mobile, we disengage the hose, depressurize the, the regulator, and then we can twist that off counterclockwise and it should spin off freely. And be careful because it can spin off and then fall on the table or floor, damaging the regulator. 